Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to talk about riding the long tail. But before I get to that, if you watched my last Thanksgiving podcast, you saw me talk about my new obsession, which is Amazing Breaker. Amazing Breaker, you launch these bombs at this glass artwork and try to explode it. It's kind of like Angry Birds vertically, and it has all these different bombs that you can use. And so when I played Amazing Breaker, I uh, promised myself that I wouldn't move on to the next level until I cleared the level with three stars, the level before it. So my wife and I have been playing it for quite a bit and we just finished level 80. And so I wanted to check how I did against the rest of the people on the planet. I thought I was doing pretty good. And so if you look at how I did against those on the rest of the planet, right here it'd be my score. Uh, my score is 8,816 of 541,000. In other words, of the over a half a million people who've been playing Amazing Breaker, I'm in the top 9,000. And that's kind of humbling. In other words, there's almost 9,000 people, even though I've been playing it the best that I can, that are better than me. And so it's kind of humbling. And so the internet is like that. No matter how uh, cool you think you might be or how creative you think you might be or talented you are, there are going to be thousands of people that are more talented than you. Um, which is kind of sad, but it's also really, really cool. That's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the long tail. The long tail is uh, gained prominence recently. I think in 2004, um, there was a book written by this guy. His name is Chris Anderson, no relation, but he talked about the long tail, which is a statistical phenomenon. And uh, the best way to understand it is to give you an example of it. And so basically, the blue curve is going to be what it used to be, and then the red curve is what it's now like based on technology. And so let me give you an example of that. I used to rent movies at a local movie store called Movie Lovers. Uh, they've got a great selection of movies. Um, they're really knowledgeable about if you, if you can't think of a movie, they'll be able to figure it out. Um, but the problem with Movie Lovers is that they're a physical store. And so they're limited in the amount, I'm trying to draw a building, they're limited in the amount of shelf space that they have. And so what that means is that they're at the blue line here, that they're probably going to rent a lot of the most uh, popular movies at that time. So they're going to rent a lot of those, but there are going to be movies that are less popular, less popular, less popular. And so people aren't going to rent these as much, but it's eventually going to hit the line. In other words, since Movie Lovers has a finite amount of shelf space, they can't have every movie that you could possibly watch. And so it's eventually going to go down to a limit. It's not that people don't want to watch some of these obscure movies. It's just that they don't have space for it to go. And so that used to be the place where I used to rent movies. I don't do it anymore. Where do I rent movies now? I rent movies at Netflix. Uh, how is Netflix different? It's a bigger store. It's a store that can hold all the movies for everybody in the United States who wants to rent a movie. And so its curve is going to be a little bit different. Its curve is going to look like the red line on here. So they probably, as a percentage, aren't going to rent as many as a percentage of the more popular titles. But since they can offer so many different titles, that curve is not going to hit the line. In fact, you're going to have what's called a long tail. In other words, they can offer all these movies that you can get in your mailbox way out here that you could never offer at Movie Lovers. And that's probably one reason why local movie stores aren't doing as well as they used to. Another example of the long tail would be Amazon. Amazon is like a store that is almost infinite in the amount of shelf space that they have. And so what they can do is they can actually generate quite a bit of revenue Instead of generating most of your revenue from this first little slice, they can actually generate quite a bit of revenue from this long tail down here. Okay, so that's the long tail conceptually what it is. But what do I mean by riding the long tail? Well, let me give you an example of that. And so when I was growing up, there really were only three alternatives if you wanted to watch TV. And those were ABC, NBC, and CBS. And so those are your only choices you could watch if you're watching uh, TV. So if it comes to science education, the show that I used to watch, not in the 1950s because I was not alive then, but in the 1970s and 1980s, there was a show called Mr. Wizard. And Mr. Wizard started in 1950, but it was found on NBC. And so we had a curve back in the day, and that curve, pretty much if you weren't watching one of the three big networks, you weren't watching TV. 
And so uh, for me, it was always Dukes of Hazard, or you're going to watch Dallas or The Love Boat because those are the only options that you could watch that night. And so what happened was we added to that and we added cable TV. In 1970, we added PBS. And so if we're talking about science education, a lot of you are probably familiar with Bill Nye. And I watched Bill Nye quite a bit and used it in my class. I was just starting to teach science when Bill Nye was around. And so what happened was we've got a longer tail. So the tail started to widen out, especially as we had cable television, especially as we had uh, other channels coming on. You, you had probably not as much viewership at the networks, and you're going to have more viewership as we go down here as we're looking at cable television. Now, what happened to video next uh, happened with the invention of the Internet or, uh, or the arrival of the Internet. And so what happened was we have this long tail now. And it's taken a while for video to catch up, but essentially we still have <clears throat> these networks up here, but it's going to be skinnier here. And as we move farther and down and farther down, we have this really long tail. And so where do I sit? Well, I sit way out here on the long tail. I don't have viewership that's close at all to that of Mr. Wizard or Bill Nye. But since the Internet is so huge, like I mentioned in my uh, problems with the Amazing Breaker, you can actually get quite a bit of viewership way down here. And so what's happening is we're having all these teachers now start to create content that's being viewed. And since the Internet is so huge, things like the Khan Academy and IB Chemistry and this physics video, all of that is actually forming a pretty large chunk of this curve. And that's what I mean by riding the long tail. And so what I thought I'd do is just kind of step through and tell you at least analytically what's going on at Bozeman Biology. And so YouTube has really updated their analytics so you can look at, you know, where's viewership coming from, who's viewing what. And what you find here is if we look at, I wanted to look at just this fall. So if we start here in August and then we go to November, you can see that viewership has gone up as far as an average. You'll see that it dips weekly. And the reason why is that every Friday, nobody's really watching videos and Saturday the same way and then they start to watch it. And so you can see the weekends on here. But I'm getting viewership that's kind of going up to around 10,000 people, which to me is pretty amazing uh, that a video that I make, uh, the total videos, I think I've almost made 200 of them, are being watched, you know, 10,000 times a day. That means that I'll lecture in a typical day, you know, just a few, uh, maybe an hour total at the school because I'm using a flipped classroom. But uh, online, it's, you know, 5,000 hours or whatever, 3,000 hours. I also wanted to show you some of the demographics of that, and I think this is kind of interesting to me. If you look at the demographics, this is, this is at Bozeman Biology, uh, since this fall, you'll find that there's kind of a bubble. In other words, there's going to be viewership here in the 13 to 17 year old range. And so I assume those are just students that are watching the videos. But you'll also see that there will be a bubble right here, and that bubble is around the 45 to 55 year old age. It looks like we're getting more, I'm getting more viewership from girls than I am from guys, but that differs according to the country. Um, but what I think is that these are probably teachers out here uh, in this kind of a range, because I'm going to be right in that demographic right there. Uh, and then these are going to be students down here. And so it's cool that the videos that I made just for my uh, biology classes are probably being viewed by students in AP Biology and students who are... Um, maybe in college and, and taking anatomy classes or things like that. And then teachers, teachers are maybe watching them or showing them in class. And so this is that what I mean by riding the long tail, that there's so many niches out there and the internet is so huge that you can actually touch quite a few people. Um, geographically, I, I wanted to take a look at this as well. And so geographically, this is a breakdown of all the view, views from this fall. And you'll find that, you know, it's probably three quarters of a million views this fall, but almost a half a million of those are in the United States, which, which makes sense. Um, so most of those views are going to be here, but a third of the views are actually coming from different countries, from Canada all the way down to Vietnam, 2,000 views this fall. And, and the cool thing in YouTube is that you can click on each of the countries and it'll tell you how many views are coming from that country. And the first thing that I found, well, actually the big thing that was uh, impressive to me that even though Greenland might have only five views, there was no country that I could really find uh, on the planet that I hadn't got some views from this fall. And so 
basically in summary, this is a, a picture right here of, of the internet. They tried to kind of visualize the internet and all the nodes on the internet and how they're connected. And each of the colors count to a different uh, continent on the planet. Uh, but basically in summary, uh, what I wanted to say is that I love <laughs> the internet. In other words, it's an amazing invention, probably the best invention that humans have ever come up with. And one of the great things that it's done is it's, it's lengthened that tail. And it's allowed people like myself, teachers, students, anybody with a computer and access to the internet to actually make the world a little bit better. And so uh, thanks for listening.